Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hello, I'm Joey McWilliams, and it's a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Anthony Verasso, who works with NewsDakota.com. And Anthony, you have had the opportunity to do something nobody else in the country, well, you and your color guy, had the opportunity to do something nobody else in the country did this past week. You got to call the very first game of the season. College football is officially underway, and it was Valley City State and Jamestown playing for the paint bucket on Thursday night. So uh, really quickly, what's it like to to know that, you know what, if anyone's watching college football today, they have to be watching you. Uh, it's incredible. This is something of, you know, play by play is something I've dreamed of doing since I was a little kid. And, you know, when you reached out to me, I'm like, wow, you know, like it's really happening. Everybody can hear me and they appreciate the work I do. And getting to call that game, Jamestown against Valley City, such a historic respectful rivalry there 74th edition of the paint bucket game just an incredible honor and i i got so nervous leading up to the game doing my prep work my hands were shaking uh <laughs> just because you know it's, it's my first time doing the game i want everyone to appreciate it i want everyone to enjoy what i'm bringing to the broadcast uh and so far i've heard some good remarks and it was just a great game all around it was, and I will tell you too, I enjoyed it. I thought you all did a, did a great job in, in covering the game, especially, again, the first one of the season. What does it mean to battle for the paint bucket really quickly? So this, this paint bucket game goes back many years. Like I said, it was a 74th edition uh, of the, the paint bucket game. We didn't get it last year due to COVID. So first game of the season, before warm-ups, Myself and my color man, Jared Sleppy, we're looking at each other. And we're like, this stadium's already packed. We <laughs> still have over two hours before this game even kicks off. So I think it's just, it's in the roots of the people in Jamestown. It's in the roots of the people right here in Valley City. And it just goes back so many years. The, the respect factor is there for sure. But at the end of the day, both these teams, they want to win. And they want to bring that trophy back to their cities. Is it the original paint bucket? I'm just asking. I... To my knowledge, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> okay. right. It's got a nice shine of gold on it, that's for right. sure. We'll verify that at a later time. We'll check that out. Uh, back to the football game, by the way, though. 24-7, Valley City State comes away with victory, and, and the Vikings really control the game throughout. Talk a little football and, and uh, tell us how it all went down. Well, as you said, Valley City, they came out. They established a running presence early. And no matter what league it is, high school, collegiate, NFL, when you can establish your running game at the top of the game, that's going to open up so many doors for you throughout the 60-minute game, right? You can do run on first down. You can do a play action. That opens up the screen passes as well. takes a lot of pressure off the O-line and especially your quarterback. And I thought Valley City did a great job of that Thursday night. You know, they're using their running back vice right away, and he's just picking up four, five chunks of yardage at a time. And that really got Jalen Pfeiffer to settle in at the quarterback position. Because, look, it's the rivalry game, okay? And it's the first game of the season. So to get your quarterback to settle in right away like that, I thought that was huge for the Vikings in victory. Now you talked about Pfeiffer, and he had a pretty good outing as well. 20 for 32 passing, 266 yards, three touchdowns, a pair of picks as well. But uh, when he felt comfortable, as you said, the running game gave him the opportunity to do that. It seemed like he managed the game well. Yeah, absolutely. And, look – Pfeiffer's a guy, he got he got to come back and play this season due to last season, the COVID issues. They still play, but he got another year of eligibility. And, hey, if it was me, I would absolutely take advantage <laughs> just like he is as well. And I thought that's what we saw um, the other night. He really settled in, controlled the game, didn't try to do too much. You know, he saw what the defense of Jamestown was giving him, and he absolutely went with it. And that's why he had three touchdown passes in the 24-7 uh, win. We're speaking with Anthony Verasso here on the summit and Midwest sports is your channel for small college sports. We talk a lot of division two and NAI sports here. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and Anthony, you know, two teams that are separated by less than 40 miles. Uh, it's the, as you mentioned, a rivalry game pre-conference play. And, but at the first game of the season, I mean, there, there are going to be some jitters. There were some miscues. I mean, it, it wasn't a flawless game, but Valley city state seemed to, you know, handle it maybe a, a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in between the plays, you saw maybe on the D-line, the O-line of both teams give a little extra shove, a little extra oomph in this game. But the, the popping was right away, like the big hits on both sides of it. You know, the receivers jamming each other with the corners at the line. It was just overall a great experience, things you love to see. Now, look, I'm somebody that I want to see both teams going full throttle, get all their ducks in a row. Would I like to see in this week four, maybe week five? Yes. But again, my first 
fall sports season out here, I get to call the paint, the paint bucket game between Jamestown and Valley City. <laughs> it was just incredible. And, you know, as you said, less than 40 miles away from each other, the Jamestown, the fan base, they traveled very well. And yeah. as, as I mentioned earlier in this interview, both sides of the stadium were just packed before even warm-ups. So credit to Jamestown. They follow their team very strongly, as they should. They have a really good team. They're a little young on the old line But I thought overall, you can't complain about that game. No, and I think it's a credit to both those fan bases as well for coming out and, and the administrations for both schools that, that the games played, especially after the, the, the season and the year that we've had prior to this, that uh, football is back, and that's a good thing to see. You know, one other thing, Anthony, I wanted to mention about this game is that you never know when you're going to get to see something interesting, and you always have to be ready on the call. So, you know, you got to see an onside kick that went backwards. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how many times have you ever seen that, right? So I'm gearing up. I'm expecting an onside kick, right? I mean, it's late in the game. Uh, Jamestown gets a touchdown on the defensive scoop and score. And, you know, everybody in the stadium, they're pretty much guessing, here comes an onside kick. Joey, I've never seen an onside <laughs> kick go spin backwards the way I did. It was like a boomerang almost. Uh, and, you know, after it happened, I was kind of – a little taken back. Like, did I really just see that? Yeah. Uh, I even said something to my color guy, you know, uh, in one of the breaks, I'm like, that, that's got to be a first. I, I don't think in any level of football, we have seen an onside kick go like that. Unfortunately for James sound, that's just kind of how the night went for them. Right. Um, but Hey, it gave us a bit of a chuckle, I guess, up at the broadcast booth. Well, enjoy those. Those are, those are the fun moments. Those are the ones you're going to look back on. And, and I can tell you in a number of years of calling games, I haven't had a chance to call that one yet. So uh, props to you for having that one already in the bag there. Now, uh, you work with NewsDakota.com and, and yep. I3G Media. Uh, yep. What does your sports coverage look like now as you're heading into the fall? What all are you going to be covering and how can the people find you? Okay, so you can catch all the action on KOVC for Valley City Sports. For our sports for Oaks, that's going to be on KDDR. All our write-ups after the game, call the action, things like that, right on our website, as you said, newsdakota.com. For me, I'm covering the Valley City sports. That's the college, uh, Valley City State, as well as the high school teams out here. So right now with the fall sports season kicking off, we're covering the Valley City State University Vikings football, as well as their volleyball team. Uh, same thing for the Valley City High School. We're covering their football varsity team. Uh, and their volleyball team as well. Same thing on the side for Oaks. You know, Jared Sleppy, my color guy the other day, he's taking the charge with the Oaks high school teams, football and volleyball right now. So we're we're full go here at I3G, and we wouldn't uh, <laughs> wouldn't want it any other way, that's for sure. No, and this this is the really fun time. Now, I know really quickly, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you go after this because I know you've got a lot going on. We're starting our week, and, and really now getting into the – uh, the time where we, we're going to hit the month of September here in a couple of days, and that's just, boy, all bets are off then. I mean, there's there's a lot going on. You are clearly from back east. Uh, you, you have the accent that may betray you just a little bit. How did you find your way over here and, and make it to North Dakota? So, you know, growing up, as I said, I've always wanted to do sports broadcasting. I went to school for it at Curry College back just outside of Boston, so I'm from Boston. Uh and when I graduated college, I always told people, even through my years, I will go wherever I need to go in this country, another country if I have to, to make my <laughs> dream of being a broadcaster happen. And, and you laugh. I, you know, before I got the job here, I applied to jobs all over America, all over Canada. Uh, I did not care. I wanted my start. I wanted someone to give me an opportunity to prove myself because not to sound cocky or uh, overconfident. I know my abilities. And look, I know I can always improve. That's for sure. But I know the knowledge I have of sports and the people that have uh, trained me, as you can say, uh, leading up to this point, I was very sure of what I could do. And thank you so much to the I3G media team. They gave me this opportunity right here in North Dakota, and I'm absolutely loving every second of it. As you said, yes, I am from Boston. I do have a bit of the accent. You know, coming out here, I was a little nervous. Like, ah, growing up in college, they always say you want to have like a neutral accent, right? You don't want people to really know where you're from. Yeah. The people love it out here. I host some <laughs> DJ radio shows throughout the week. People come up to me. They're like, oh, you're the Boston guy, things like that. A gym I work out in down the street, a woman came up to me. She heard me talking, and she asked. So, you know, I've always been told don't have the accent, but I got to say everybody out here, they like it and have been so warm and welcoming to me, and I 
I, I just absolutely love my time out here so far. <laughs> well, I, I mean no disrespect by that at all. Oh, I mean, no, I, and I, you know, you, you are who you are and that's great. And there are times, and I, I heard the same thing in, in school and there are times I realized that, that my Southern accent may betray me just a little bit too. So I, I get it. That's fine. But I would encourage you too, Anthony, you're doing a great job. Uh, it was a, it was a great call you and tell Jared as well. I, I thought will. you all did well together. Good uh, chemistry there. Be confident. Always be ready to learn. And I think you are, you're on the right track. So, again, Anthony Verasso here on the Summit with us. I appreciate that. Enjoy the season and, and get out there and call some more great games. And thanks for taking some time with me today here on Midwest Sports Net. Absolutely. Thank you so much for thinking of me. I, I love my time. 